Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Live at Five. We are very excited for you to join us for another Live at Five that we have. We host these every single Wednesday at 5 p.m. And today we have a very special guest for you. So my name is Emily. I'm a recruitment officer at Carleton, but I'm actually going to bring on a different uh, star of today's show. Uh, her name is Storm and Storm is going to give you a guided virtual tour of Carleton's campus. So, you know, unfortunately, while we're not able to give real uh, tours in person, we want to give you uh, as, as much of a, a tour as we can virtually. So Storm is going to walk you through campus today. She's going to show you a bunch of different buildings and she's going to sort of show you what makes Carleton really unique and what makes Carleton's campus so great. So I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, here is Storm for you to give a guided virtual tour. Okay, perfect. Hi everybody, my name is Storm. Um, I use she, her pronouns, um, and I'm obviously a student at Carleton. Um, I'm in my fourth year of health sciences at Carleton. I'm doing a um, concentration in disability and chronic illness as well, and then I'm also doing a minor in psychology. Um, so yeah, like Emily said, I'm going to be taking you guys on a virtual walking tour today. Um, it will take about a half hour, um, and we'll have um, time for questions throughout the tour as well. Um, so if at any point I explain something too fast, too slow, you need more information on something, we do have a question and answer function. Um, so you just ask your question in that and we have a great team working behind the scenes um, and they'll be more than happy um, to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and before I begin, I would also like to take the time to acknowledge um, that Carleton University um, and myself acknowledge that the uh, location of the Carleton campus is located on the unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Um, so taking a look at um, the Carleton campus, which we can see right here on my screen, um, you can see it's really self-contained and that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why I actually picked Carleton myself. Um, even though we're in a city of close to a million people, um, Carleton is very self-contained. So you can see we've got the uh, the Rideau running along the south side of campus. We've got the canal running up along the east, no, west side of campus. And then we have a street called Bronson Avenue running up along the east side. So it means that campus is kind of hard to get on and off, um, which is really great because it means that there's not a lot of traffic around um, and it means that campus is a really quiet and peaceful place, which is definitely something I appreciate coming from a bit of a smaller town. Um, so taking a look at our first building here, we're headed into Robertson Hall. Um, it's just, there we go, okay, perfect. So yeah, this is Robertson Hall. Um, the spot we're looking at is the Undergraduate Recruitment Office and Admission Services, which is the team that we all sort of hail from. Um, this is the team that's responsible for obviously like recruitment, so doing events such as these to sort of teach people about Carleton and all the awesome things that we have to offer, and then also admissions as well. So these are the team that's also responsible for answering any questions, concerns that you might have about applying to Carleton. If your program has any additional requirements like extra applications or anything like that. This is the team that you contact um, if you have any sort of questions about that. Um, here's at the outside of Robertson Hall what it looks like in the in the wonderful spring and summertime um, and then the lobby of the building as well. So we've got our tour center just in the very back behind those TVs. That's where we would normally meet um, but we get to do this um, from the comfort of our own homes today. Um, so the next spot on the tour is our um, awards and financial aid office. Um, now this is a team that's responsible for obviously uh, awarding students with uh, scholarships at Carleton and also helping you with financial aid and your OSAP or your uh, or the Ontario Students Assistance Program, I believe. Um, the really great thing about Carleton is we offer lots of different scholarships for all kinds of students and some of them are actually automatic. So you don't even have to apply um, for these particular scholarships. They're just automatically applied to your account, which is really great. Um, so the one that we have um, is one is grades based, which is really awesome. So it means that anybody that has an 80 or above average um, is eligible for this scholarship. Um, you know, when you first start out, um, if you come in with an 80 to an 84 percent average, um, you'll get a thousand dollars and that will go up in $1,000 increments for every 5%. So basically 80 to 84, you're getting $1,000 per year, um, an 85 to an 89, you're getting 2,000 and so on all the way up to 100. So that's definitely super handy. 
Heading on next to take a look at parking services. Um, so if you um, have a car and you would like to park on campus, this is the team that you would go visit. Um, they're also responsible for the lockers on campus as well. Um, so the really great thing, if you happen to live off campus and don't necessarily want to bring your big heavy coat and big heavy boots around with you in the tunnels in the wintertime, you can always throw all your stuff in a locker um, and then you'll be able to sort of walk around all day hands free, which is definitely super handy. Um, another couple of resources that we have in this building um, that I would also like to mention. Um, we have our Department of University Safety. Um, so this is a team that's responsible for making sure that you're being safe and that you're feeling safe while you're here on campus. Um, so we have our special constables who are, um, you know, helpful um, in any case of like emergency and things like that. Um, we also have our um, QCERT as well, which is our um, first, resp first response team um, here on campus. Um, so if you ever have any medical emergency while you're here on campus, um, we have a team of 50 plus volunteers who are trained in extensive first aid and they'll be more than happy to sort of come to your location and help you out. Um, so taking a look at our next spot, this is Richcraft Hall. Um, it's home of a lot of our arts programs. So we've got the journalism program in here, our Bachelor of Global and International Studies program, Russian and Eurasian Studies. Um, and I think there's a couple others in here as well. Um, now, when I talk about the home of a particular program, what that basically means is this is where you'll find any professor offices, any program specific off, uh, like workstations or anything like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of your classes will be in this particular building, especially in your first and second years um, when your class sizes are quite a bit larger. You'll find that classes will sort of be all over the place. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be in this particular building the entire time. I will also say if I don't mention your particular um, program's main building, totally OK. Like I said, you'll be all over the place um, and we do have orientation on the first day of school, so you'll be able to sort of figure out where all of your classes are and things like that. Um, we've got this absolutely beautiful living wall, as you can see in the green there. Um, and a lot of people will take pictures and things like that in front of um, that for like LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this here is our super lab. This was a five million dollar lab that opened in 2008 and can house up to 120 students in there at once. Um, now the really cool thing about the super lab is you actually get to use this from your first year. So if you're taking any science courses and you need to take a chemistry lab, you'll actually be in here right from the get go, which is really cool. Um, so if, you're if we take a look at what we can sort of see, got fume hoods all over the place just to make sure that people are being safe and feeling safe. Um, we've got these big four workstations and a TA is actually assigned to every single workstation. So you never have to worry about not being able to find help um, if you need you know, assistance at any point. Um, I will also say, even though the, uh, the lab does house up to 120 students, they typically split the classroom in half. So you'll have, you know, maybe a first year chemistry class going on in the front and then in the back half you will have, you know, a second or third year like organic chemistry or genetics class going on in the back, which is definitely really handy. Alrighty, so the next place we're going to take um, a stop at is the University Center. Um, I'm going to skip the bookstore for now just because we do have a better image coming on later on, but I'll be sure to give you all guys all of the necessary information in regards to the bookstore. Um, another thing we have in this building is our CKCU FM. Um, this is a student uh, run uh, campus based radio um, and it's the longest um, community based radio station in Canada, which is pretty cool. Don't have to be a journalism student to get involved um, or a communication student either. Whatever your interests, um, they'd love to have you help out and volunteer. Um, these are our University Center flags in the University Center atrium. The atrium, we have tons of events running throughout the year, um, job fairs, video game uh, events and things like that. If that's what you're interested in, um, a lot of different cultural weeks and things like that. So this is definitely a really cool place to check out. Um, and these flags just represent um, all of the countries from which we have international students just for a way to, for them to see a piece of home while they're studying here in Canada. So this is the campus card office um, as well as information Carleton. So if at any point you've had any questions about Carleton or anything related and you're not too sure how to con oh, who to contact, um, you definitely go talk to information Carleton first. 
and then they're also responsible for getting your campus cards um, while you're here at university. Um, so Carlton is responsible, or this, this team is responsible for giving you two cards. Um, we have our bus pass right here, and then this is our, our campus card here. So the campus card works a lot like a debit card. It's like your one-stop card for everything. Um, it's got a mag stripe on the back, so you can you know pay for food, pay for laundry if you're living in residence. Um, what else can you do? Access the gym, um, any program specific buildings or doors you need to get into, you use this card. Um, it's got a barcode for checking out books at the library, and then it's also your ID for um, uh, like midterms and final exams. Um, so definitely super important. You don't lose this card. You keep this card. Um, and the other thing, you get a really good picture. Um, you may notice I am covering my photo. Um, it was 30 degrees when they took my picture and I didn't realize it was being taken. Um, and this picture does stick with you for the full four years that you're here. Um, so make sure you get a good picture um, when you apply. The really nice thing the book, uh, the campus card office does is they will actually um, if you send in a picture and they like it enough, they'll put it on the campus card for you free of charge. So definitely do that. Do not make the same mistakes I did. Um, and so like they said, they're also responsible for giving you your bus pass. So this is your little blue card here. If you're familiar with the Presto Pass, it works a lot like a Presto Pass does. It's just tap and ride. It's included in your student fees and you get unlimited rides from September to April, provided that you're enrolled full time. So definitely something to take advantage of. Um, so the friendship bench um, is a bench that's right next to the campus card office um, and this is just a physical and visual reminder for students um, to have sometimes tough conversations surrounding mental health and mental illness. Um, so be sure to you know make sure you're checking in on your friends, reaching out um, and making sure that they're okay or getting the assistance that they need if they are in you know a mental health crisis. Um, the other thing I do like to talk about here as well is our Paul Menton Center for Students with Disabilities or our PMC. Now when I say the word disability that can mean anything from temporary to physical to temp oh, so yeah sorry temporary to permanent mental physical emotional anything or anything in between um, any ailment condition that you have that you think may sort of hinder your, your performance in any way while you're here at university um, what the PMC does is they match you with a coordinator and that coordinator will work with you to create um, um, accommodations for you while you're in university so those accommodations might be um, those accommodations might be things like, you know, providing a note taker if you maybe can't pay attention for long periods of time or giving you extra time to do um, final exams if you maybe struggle with reading or writing. Um, it can be, you know, anything and everything. Um, best piece of advice I can offer if you're thinking maybe I'll need the service is get signed up early because school does snowball and things do get very busy very quickly. Um, and so it can be hard to, you know, scramble for assistance when you're like in the middle of the semester. So as soon as you know you're coming to Carleton, um, sign up with them, get the, all the documentation in order so you'll be ready and rare and when you come to university. Um, this here is Baker's. This is like a fully service restaurant that we have on the fourth floor of um, the University Center. Um, they've got great six dollar breakfasts um, and you'll be able to you can often meet professors here if you're looking to like uh, ask them any sort of questions or things like that. Wanted to take your family out but you don't want to leave campus. This is definitely a really great place to do it. Um, next, this is the Carleton University Students Association or CUSA. So CUSA is a student run organization and this is the home that provides funding um, and um, support to our over 300 clubs and societies on campus. Um, so the really great thing about Carleton, if you are in a program at Carleton, your program will have a society associated with it. Um, so for me, I'm in health science. We have the Health Science Society um, and that's a team of health science students that work to create events um, for health science students. Anybody in any program can attend but these events are you know created you know by health science for health science um, these are things like you know maybe they'll bring in um, graduated health science students and they'll talk about you know what they are doing with their degree um, they might do like coffee hours with professors where you can come in and ask questions um, and all that kind of fun stuff um, they've got other kinds of clubs um, that they offer as well so things like i know we have a tea club a makeup makeup club if you're interested we've got a chess club kayaking anything you can think of we've got a club for it and if we don't have a club for it you can make a club for it um, so definitely lots of great ways to get involved while you're here so this here is our food court. It's one of the largest um, food service locations um, on campus with the exception of the residence cafeteria. Um, we've got lots of different great foods here like burgers, sushi, 
um, subway, pizza, all that kind of great stuff. Um, and it's also a zero, one, a zero waste facility as well. So over 90% of the food packaging that's created um, in this particular uh, food court can actually be um, sustainably um, disposed of. Um, so that's something that, that Carleton is definitely very proud of. So the International Student Services Office, or the ISSO, is a really important resource for all of our international students. Um, they run lots of events to support students um, for their first um, semesters in Canada, um, uh, occasionally their first winters as well, because it does get quite cold. Um, and so, you know, if you're coming from a different climate, it may be a little bit hard to get used to. Um, and this is also the team that's responsible as well for domestic students if you're looking to do an exchange and go international. Um, so we um, have over 175 partner universities in 35 different countries. So anywhere you want to go, um, there's definitely somewhere for you, um, you know, out, out there in the world. So definitely recommend taking advantage of this as well if you're a domestic student and are maybe looking at doing a semester or a year abroad. All right, so this here is our Carleton University bookstore. This is your one stop shop for all textbooks, um, clothing, um, school supplies, if you want any snacks or things like that as well. We also have that. Um, so we've got all these great clothes and things like that. I'm just going to try and skip through a little bit so we can get a look at the book section. Um, so this section right here, just through the doors, is our book section, just through these little doors back there. Um, and the Carleton Library, uh, sorry, the Carleton Bookstore is really great in that we offer four different ways for you to pay for your textbooks. Um, so you can buy them new. This is often the most expensive option, but this can be really handy if your class for whatever reason has like um, an online component to the textbook or um, online component or if there's like a, a quiz that you have to complete in conjunction with the textbook, that's really handy. Um, if that's not an option and you're maybe not necessarily as concerned about having a new textbook, you can buy a textbook used. Um, so this textbook, um, potentially someone has written in the textbook before, um, but still a very good quality textbook either way. Um, and the other option that we offer is renting textbooks. So renting works a lot like purchasing. Um, you take the textbook from the bookstore, you're free to use it as if it was your own textbook, but at the end of the semester, you return it and then the bookstore would sell it or rent it as a used textbook. Um, so this is definitely um, the, the lesser expensive of the of the four of the of the four options um, and it's definitely a really great um, thing to do if maybe you don't want you know that big you know a thousand page textbook you know just gather, gathering dust on your shelf once the semester's over. Um, so yeah like I said you can buy it you can buy it new, buy it used, rent it new or rent it used. So there's four different ways there. Um, and then we also offer price matching as well. So if you find um, a copy of your textbook um, at a big box store like Amazon or Indigo, things like that, and they have a less, uh, they have a, 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 a cheaper price than what we have listed, you just bring that listing into the bookstore and they will price match it and give you the difference on a gift card, which is definitely really handy. Okay, perfect. Um, one of the last spots on the university center portion of the tour is our Roosters Coffee House. Um, this is a student run and student owned cafe um, and they've got lots of great sandwiches, um, really well priced and then they've also got fair trade coffee and tea as well, which is awesome. All right, so this here is our academic quad um, surrounded by um, many of our academic buildings um, and it's an absolutely beautiful space to come um, and study during like the spring and summer semesters when school is in person. Um, I've often come and study here before like my, uh, midterms and exams and stuff. Absolutely beautiful spot. A um, couple other pictures as well. We've got Tory building, which we'll be heading into next. Um, and then we've got our some all the, uh, wonderful tour guides and um, things like that hanging out at the academic quad. And then the one last picture there. Um, the image, uh, sorry, the building behind that is the library, which we're headed into, if not next, um, in just a little bit. Not next. OK, cool. So this is as we all know, the Rideau Canal. Um, it's the world's largest skating rink um, in the wintertime over almost 7.8, actually a little, yeah, 7.8 kilometers. Um, so, you know, if you live um, to the north of campus, you can definitely um, skate to campus if you ever wanted to do that, which I think is super cool. Um, or if you work at, or if you go to school at Carleton at work at Parliament, instead of taking the bus, you could always um, just skate to work, which is definitely super, super cool. All right, so this building here is Tory Building. Um, as soon as it'll, there we go, perfect. So yeah, this building here is Tory Building. Although it may not look it, it is actually our oldest building on campus. Um, it's had a lot of facelifts over the years to make it look as good as it does now. 
Um, it's not the home of any particular program, but still a very important building nonetheless in terms of resources. Um, the entire first floor of this building is all biology labs. So if you ever um, are taking any biology courses, your labs will be in the first floor of this building. Um, we've also got the registrar's office. Um, so this is a team that's responsible for helping you with registration once you've accepted your offer to Carleton University. Um, all of their um, resources can be accessed um, online as well, but if for some reason you're having trouble with registering or anything like that, um, you can give them a call, you can visit them, you can email them, and they'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, if you're coming from another university to Carleton, um, they're also responsible for like um, processing transcripts and things like that as well. Um, career services is on the fourth floor of this particular building, um, and this team is really responsible for helping you um, start your um, your time in the workforce. Um, so they'll help you with um, job searching, resume and cover letter writing, um, interview skills, things like that. If you've never had an interview before, they'll actually sit down with you and do a mock interview, which I find really, really helpful. Um, the Student Experience Office is a team that's responsible for making sure that campus isn't only a study and workspace, but is also a fun space where students can come and relax, which is really cool. Um, so they'll do events like um, Bob Ross paint nights, they'll do like movie nights, which are super awesome, and then they're also responsible for planning your frosh or your fall orientation. So that's like the first week when you come to Carleton, super young, super nervous, and you're like, how am I going to meet anybody? Fall orientation, 100%. Um, this is definitely a really great way. Um, they have lots of events that they run throughout the week. Um, I know for me, when I when I did Frosh, I got to meet, I got or I didn't get to meet, I got to see Post Malone and Mariana's Trench. There was like this big dance. There was like a, a what's a reptile exhibit, which was super cool. A ton of percent worth it. Great way to meet friends um, and people. So definitely something. I recommend. Um, and then the last thing that we'll mention in Tory Building is the Academic Advising Center. So Academic Advising works a lot like your high school guidance counselors. Um, they're just here to make sure you're taking the right courses you're supposed to be taking, you're getting the right grades you're supposed to be getting, um, and you're even you're getting the right degree that you want to be getting. Um, if you, you know, start out in one program um, and you do your first semester and you think this is not it for me, um, Academic Advising is really good at helping you navigate um, your, um, your academic career to make sure that you're getting, you know, what you want out of your degree. I will also say as well, a lot of programs will have their own academic advisors. Um, so this is an individual that was hired by the department who knows a lot about your particular program, and that is a really invaluable resource as well, or a really valuable resource um, for individuals. All right, so this here is our Ojigwo Nong Center. Um, this is a center that's available for our indigenous population on campus, um, and they will do um, academic and cultural programming um, for um, our indigenous population as well. Um, and there's also a smudging room in here as well for our indigenous students. All right, so this here is Southern Hall. Um, Southern Hall has got tons of classrooms of varying sizes. Um, I would consider this to be a small classroom. This will fit between 30 and 40 students and is pretty common in your third and fourth years, as well as um, when you are in your first years, if you ever have a tutorial or a workshop. Um, so in your first year, classes will be typically between 200 and 300 um, students. Um, but obviously, you know, there may be times where you're not necessarily as comfortable raising your hand in a classroom of 300 I know I wasn't. So a lot of times what they'll do is they will actually split the class into around 10 groups. Can I do math? Yeah, 10 groups of around 20 to 30 students um, and each group will be assigned a TA um, and then every single week they'll have like a workshop or a tutorial where they might go over any material that students have trouble understanding. Um, they might have you complete worksheets or do assignments in this particular tutorial. So that's definitely a really handy resource that's available. Um, in terms of classes, how they work, um, typically you'll have about three hours of in-class time per week, and then that will be supplemented as well by um, lectures, labs, and or sorry, tutorials, labs, and workshops. Um, the earliest classes start is 8.30 in the morning, um, and the latest they run is 10 o'clock at night, though I will say I've never had a class run past 9 p.m. Um, and the really great thing as well, um, you get to sort of make your own schedule for the most part. So if you're a morning person, you can give yourself those 8.30s. Um, if you're not a morning person, which I'm absolutely not, you can sort of schedule your classes to be a little bit later in the day for the most part. 
So this here is McCodrum Library. Um, it's five floors, including the basement with the third and fifth floors being designated quiet floors. Um, this is definitely something I love um, being, you know, a, a, someone who likes silence while I study. Um, it means that I can sort of get work done without having to ask people to be quiet, which is really awesome because the employees will do that for you. Um, the fourth floor is our discovery center and again it is one of my favorite spots if I'm ever doing group work. Um, as you can see, they've got like these really great couches if you're ever looking to study with a big group. Um, they've got um, uh, study rooms as well and then we actually also have a gaming lab. So if you ever, you know, have a video game that you ever need to test out or, you know, like de-stress or things like that, you can book out the gaming lab for free actually. <coughs> Sorry. We've got like a PS4 in there, an Xbox One, a Switch, and a Wii. So you can rent out the, uh, the gaming lab with your friends, which is definitely super awesome. All right. The last space we have um, on the fourth floor. We have study rooms all over the library, but the really great thing you can book these out again completely free. Um, and it means that you and a group of friends, if you're working on a project together, um, can find a space to study, which is definitely really handy. All right, so CSAS is our Center for Student Academic Support, um, and this is a team that sort of um, is, they do a lot of different things um, in order to help students succeed in their academics. Um, so they'll do things like um, create workshops that are about an hour long um, to sort of help students in their first and second years. So anything like how to study for an exam, how not to plagiarize, um, how to write an essay, how to do research, things like that. They'll have all these kinds of workshops that you can attend. Um, and then they'll also do a, um, a thing called PASS as well, which stands for Peer Assisted Study Sessions. Um, now these sessions are offered in any course that has a high DFW rate, so a high degrade, fail, or withdraw. Um, and what they'll do is they'll bring in a student who has taken the class before and has received a letter grade of A or higher. And then that student will sit in on the class and create workshops based on the things that you're learning. Um, so it's not um, connected to the class. So if the professor won't know if you attend PASS and the PASS facilitator, so the individual that's leading the workshops, won't know if you attend class. It's just an, an extra resource that's available to you that I super recommend taking advantage of. Um, they've done a whole bunch of research into the stuff that they do because they've been doing it for quite some time. Um, and students that um, regularly attend PASS receive up to a letter grade higher than what they would have received had they not attended. So it's definitely a service that's available to help not hurt and I super recommend taking advantage of it. Um, now from Intention to Action or FIDA is a team of individuals, um, it's a counseling program um, that's available to students um, to help them with managing um, stress often related to academia. Um, so if you find that you know you're doing super great in high school and then you get to university and you're like what happened, I'm not doing well, I don't know what's going on, um, you can meet with a counselor at FIDA and they'll sort of walk you through um, a whole bunch of different things what may be going on, you know, tips and tricks to help you succeed and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's a definitely really good resource that I really recommend taking advantage of. Um, so Minto Center, um, this is one of our engineering buildings on campus. Um, and so it's got a whole bunch of, um, if you're interested in engineering, yeah, this is the main building, one of the main buildings that you'll be in. Um, this particular build, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, engineering is one of the programs that has their own academic advisor, um, I, I, sorry, academic advising team. So um, you, if you're interested in engineering, would not attend the, um, um, go to the general academic advising, you'd go to the um, engineering academic advising just because um, engineering is a little, a little bit more complex um, to organize and register for and things like that. So this is a really great team um, that's responsible for that sort of thing. Um, the really great thing about engineering as well, or our engineering programs in particular, is that we are an accredited university. Um, so if you're looking at engineering and haven't heard that word before, I'll break it down for you. Basically what it means is um, someone from the uh, government of Canada, I assume, um, has come to Carleton and has taken a look at all of the theory that we teach um, at Carleton and they said, yep, what you're teaching is um, acceptable to our standards and once you graduate from um, Carleton with an en engineering degree you'll be able to go into the workforce right away which is awesome. Universities that aren't accredited you'll still graduate with an engineer engineering degree absolutely no problem um, but you will have to complete extra certification. So a university that is accredited you won't have to do that extra certification you won't have to pay for that extra certification so that's just something to be aware of when you're thinking about which university you're going to if for engineering. 
Um, the really great thing about our engineering program as well is it's a 60 40 split. So you're in the classroom 60% of the time um, learning about all of the theory and stuff, but then the other 40% you're, you're doing um, um, in the, the labs, like actually practically like doing lab experiments and things like that, which is definitely a really great thing. Um, there's also a resource center as well on the fifth floor of this building that's available only to engineering students. Um, so it's got like a lot of quiet spots to study whole bunch of other things. Um, so that's definitely a really great resource as well for engineering students. All right. So next we're going to take a stop into our tunnels. Um, if you didn't know, surprise, Carleton is over five kilometers of tunnels that connect every building to almost every other building on campus. Um, I say almost every other building because there is one building um, that isn't connected. It's the Child Care Centre. Um, we figured it wouldn't be the greatest idea if small children had access to the tunnels because if they found their way into the tunnels, um, they'd never be able to find them again or we'd never be able to find them again. So for that reason, that is the only building that is blocked off. But residence is connected. All the academic buildings are connected um, and the um, athletics buildings are connected. Bad news about that one is that there's absolutely no excuse to not go to the gym if you live in residence. Um, you know, it's too cold to go outside. You just you do your warm up in the tunnels like there's no excuse. Um, but it's definitely a really great resource for individuals in the wintertime like me. I hate the cold. So being able to take the tunnels was definitely really great. And it also makes campus a lot more accessible to students with disabilities. Um, it means that they don't have to go above ground to, um, you know, potentially slip on ice, um, any obstacles, you know, snow is really hard to get to uh, through. Um, so it means that students become a lot more independent as well, which is definitely really awesome. Um, and another another really great thing as well is that they're painted a lot of them. So a lot of times clubs and societies um, will have um, painted walls, uh, residence floors as well will paint walls. Um, so it's an absolutely beautiful. I love walking through the tunnels and seeing like what was popular in that particular year, which is definitely super cool. So like I said, tons and tons of pictures all over the place. Um, and then they're really easy to navigate as well. Over the last couple of years, um, they've done a really good job of making um, the maps and things like that super easy to understand. Um, so if you look in this green portion here, this here is our residence portion of campus. Um, this big colorful section down in the southwest, yes, southwest, is our academic portion of campus. And then the pink section is our athletics section. So a really easy way to sort of take a look at the map. Everything's clearly labeled and you can figure out where you are and where you're going, which is awesome. All right, so we're headed over to the other side of campus now. This is our athletics section of campus. Um, Lots of really great resources in here. Again, your athletics membership is included in your student fees, so no excuses to not be going to the gym. Um, I mean, I'm, I've, I've come up with excuses, so absolutely no blame on you guys if you come up with those excuses as well. But we've made sure that it's an easy, accessible resource for students should they like to use it. Um, so the first resource we have is our Carleton University pool. Um, we'll have free swims. Um, almost every single day, which is really awesome. So if you you know, lived in residence and wanted to go swimming with a group of friends, definitely recommend. Um, I did that with my floor when I lived in residence and I absolutely loved it. Um, we've got the high diving board at uh, five, seven and a half and 10 meters. If you have the courage to jump off of any of those heights, I commend you. Um, I did the five meter one once and it definitely was not my thing. I don't need to go any higher than that, um, but definitely can be really, really fun. Um, we've also got kayaks as well, so we've got a car, uh, we've got our kayaking club and sometimes they'll practice their whitewater rafting um, in the pool before they head on and over to, um, you know, the rivers and stuff around Ottawa. Um, and then we've got lane swimming, obviously, as well. So if you are a lane swimmer, that's something you enjoy. Um, they'll have uh, lane swimming open a couple times um, a week as well, um, and so you're able to get your um, your laps in that way. All right, so this here is our high performance center um, and is available to students um, on our varsity teams. Um, we also have a um, fitness center as well for students who aren't on any varsity teams. It's quite a bit larger and there's lots of um, varying machines and things like that for individuals. Um, the first half is like all cardio. So you've got like your ellipticals, your stationary bikes, your treadmills, all that kind of fun stuff. And in the back you have um, a whole bunch of different weightlifting machines. I can't name those. I'm so sorry, but um, any any muscle group you can think of, you can work it out. Um, 
We've also got lots of people on staff as, uh, as well that are constantly available to help you um, just to make sure you don't ruin any of the equipment or even worse, potentially injure yourself. Um, so if you have any questions about how something is used, anything like that, um, they'll be more than happy to assist you, which is awesome. So this right here is our field house, um, and this is sort of where we talk about intramural sports. Um, if you're looking to maybe get fit in a different way while you're here at university, we also offer um, intramural sports as well. So things like um, soccer, ultimate frisbee, flag football, field hockey, dodgeball, volleyball, basketball. Um, you can either, you know, you can find a group of friends um, and join as a team, or you can join a team that's already been created. So definitely a really great way. Um, to you know, a different way to stay active, a different way to meet friends, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, yes, yeah, so we have intramural sports, and then we also have a track um, around the field house as well. Super so interested in running, but maybe not so much on a, on outside during the winter time or on the treadmill. We do have a track in here that you are free to use. Um, and then this here is our ice house. Um, so there's like pick up hockey, hockey games that will happen a lot of the time here. Um, skating lessons. If you're not from Ottawa and maybe ne have never had the opportunity to skate before, we do have learn to skate um, lessons. So definitely re recommend taking advantage of those. All right, so this here is our Carleton Technology and Training Center. Um, so this is um, a lot of different, I mean, Carleton Technology and Training Center is a really big title, but it's got a lot of different resources um, in this particular building. Um, so co-op is located in this particular building. So if, you're, if your program offers cooperative education, um, this is where you would sort of go to get any assistance about, you know, finding co-op placements, um, helping with interviews and things like that, helping you get matched up with an employer um, and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's definitely a really great resource for any students that are interested in co-op. Um, health and counseling is also in this building as well. So if you, you know, potentially injured something somewhere, you've got a weird bump, um, something smelling a little funny, anything you can think of, um, you can head into our walk-in clinic or you can make an appointment as well and they'll be able to take a look um, and, you know, assist you. Um, if they prescribe you any medication, um, and you don't want to leave campus to do that either, no worries. There's a pharmacy on the first floor of this particular building, so you can just go and get your pre prescriptions filled, which is awesome. We also have a dentist office in this particular building as well. The dental hygienists and assistants in there are absolutely wonderful. Um, that's where I go for my um, dental work, so I definitely recommend um, their services. Um, and then we also have our equity and inclusive communities, which is what this slide shows here. Um, so this is a team that's responsible for making sure that um, everyone and anyone and everyone feels welcome and included while they're here at university. Um, oh, and then there's just, yeah, the 360 image there. So yeah, that was our tour. Um, I wanted to thank you all so much for um, sticking with me. I know we went a little bit over time, so I do apologize for that. Um, I really hope that um, the team has done a really great job of answering any questions, um, and they will still be in the chat um, if you have any other questions about anything that I've mentioned. Um, but that being said, I want to, yeah, thanks so much again, and I'll pass it over back to, to Emily. Awesome. Thank you so much, Storm, for that uh, wonderful tour. It was really great to be able to see campus. Even though we can't see it in person right now, it was really great to be able to get that uh, full 360 tour and actually see inside of uh, all of the buildings and get to get to kind of have a sneak peek at some of the really cool things and features that we have on campus. So that was awesome. Thank you, Storm, for that. Now, we will stay on here for a few more minutes for you folks. If you have any last minute questions, you can feel free to type them into the chat and we will answer any questions that you have. And we just wanna thank you so much for joining us. And as always, you can keep in, keep in touch via email or social media. Uh, we are always reachable at admissions at carlton.ca and you can follow, follow all of our um, social media channels, which is at carlton underscore future. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today and uh, hopefully we will see you at next week's Live at Five. Take care. <laughs>